Okay, so today's video, it's another one in the Canon vs Pentax series where I'll be comparing the, the Canon 7D Mark II that I picked up to my Pentax series cameras, so the K3 and K3 Mark II. If you haven't seen any of the videos that I've done in the series yet, I'll leave a link to those in the description below. But what I'm going to be doing in today's video is comparing the Pentax K3 Mark I to the Canon 7D Mark II in terms of the bodies, the overall feel of the bodies, how they feel in hand to the user. Of course, these are my experiences and my opinions, but I'm going to give them anyway. And um, yeah, so things like the, the weight of the cameras, the grips, um, the weather sailing, stuff like that. So there's no menu diving in this one today. We'll leave that for another video and let's crack on and get this one done. So I'll cover first the weather sealing capabilities of the cameras and we're going to start here with the Pentax K3. Now Pentax are really well known for their weather sealed capabilities, their cameras, it's gone back quite a, quite a long time to being known for this type of stuff. And the Pentax K3 series is no different. And this is the Mark 1 version obviously that I'm showing you now and it's a camera that I've personally used for the last two years to shoot motocross. Now, if no one knows what motocross is, just give that a quick Google search and you'll quickly find out that shooting in those conditions requires a really good level of weather sailing. Um, I, I've personally had this camera out in the snow, sleet, rain, wind, you know, dust, mud, all that type of stuff. And um, it's come through every time. It's never wavered. Uh, so from my personal experience, the Pentax K3 it's just great for that type of stuff, you know. I wouldn't be prepared to take it out if I if I didn't think it could handle it, and it has. It's handled it really well. As you can see, the all the rubber sailing faces for the the SD card slots, um, the the mic input, the battery door, they all really well sailed uh, on the Pentax K3 body. And yeah, it's uh, a 10 out of 10 for a weather sailing for the Pentax. Okay, so we've checked out the Pentax's weather sailing. Um, what it has to offer. Let's have a look at the Canon 7D Mark II's weather sailing. So as you can see here, we've got the, the rubber doors that protect the internals of the camera where the, the mic input is and stuff like that. And they are nicely sailed. Nice thick rubber sails around there, rubber grommets. And that's going to stop any water ingress, any dust, mud that doesn't want to be in there. Anything that shouldn't be in there, it's going to stop that. Um, I've owned this camera personally for around about a month up to this date, uh, the time of recording, and each weekend I've had it out to the motocross tracks, so that's in really dusty conditions, muddy conditions, and the camera has held up really well so far. But one thing that I have noticed on the camera is, that's not quite as good as the Pentax, is as you can see here, the, on the SD card side, um, the, the, the door opening for, to protect the SD card, it doesn't seem as well sailed, in my opinion, as what the Pentax is. You know, I have not looked up then the, the um, schematics for these cameras. So it might suggest otherwise, it might suggest that they have got really good weather sailing for the, the Canon 7D Mark II on the, the doors here. And also on the uh, underneath the camera on the battery door, that doesn't seem as good either. But I'm just going off what I can see eyesight wise. Um, it doesn't seem quite as good as the Pentax. So in terms of weather sailing, I'm going to give this to the Pentax. Not by much, but I'm going to put it that way. So up next we've got the weight comparison. Now this is a fairly important test I suppose because if you're doing photography like what I do, which is event photography out at the tracks all day, you're walking around, you're carrying the cameras with you and the lenses obviously, you've got a backpack, you don't want a really heavy setup. So APS-C comes in quite useful for me. And what I'll be doing is I'll weigh the, the cameras first and then I'm going to weigh the lenses afterwards just to show you how much each setup weighs my setup that I use for sports. So we've got the, the K3 coming at 810 grams there. And what we'll do now is we'll measure the DA55 to 300 PLM lens, which is the lens for my Pentax K3. So I'll just show you now the 
the weight of the DA55-300 to lens, the PLM version of this lens that I use, with my Pentax K3 for the event photography for the sports, and we'll show you the weight of that, and that's coming in at 495 grams, and that's with both the caps on, and also the lens hood. So let's check out the Canon 7D Mark II and see what that camera weighs in at. Obviously it's a bigger body than the Pentax K3 Mark I, so I am expecting it to be heavier. It's 922 grams, so that is 112 grams heavier than the K3 Mark I. It's quite a bit of difference. And up now is the lens that I bought for the 7D Mark II. This is the Canon 70-200 f4 USM IS lens. Let's see what this weighs in at. I'm expecting this to be quite heavy. Yep, it's 859 grams. So that's a substantial weight gain over the Pentax system for the stuff that I use it for, event photography. Now, this is something I didn't think that I would end up covering, but um, I have because of where the button placement is. So it's basically just the, the lens interchangeability of the cameras. So on the Pentax K mount, um, on the K3 here, the Pentax engineers have put the button, in my opinion, in the perfect place. It's on the right hand side of the camera underneath and it marries up perfectly with your, your hand on the grip for, you know, holding the camera in hand and being able to change the lens easily, taking the lens off and putting the lens on. As you can see here, it's straight underneath there. Um, it's just easy to do. It's no hassle. Um, so it's well thought out by the Pentax engineers in terms of lens changeability. So now let's take a look at the Canon 7D Mark II and the lens um, lock button, basically. It's on obviously the opposite side of the camera to what the Pentax is, as you can see here. And for me personally, this is why I've actually done this test, um, just to show people that much prefer it on the on the right hand side just below your your finger because it makes it so much easier to actually change your lens where you have to press the the button on the left hand side here on the canon 7d mark ii and hold the lens in hand it's just much easier on the pentax so the design engineers fudged it on the canon there in my opinion much prefer the pentax So this is a little bit of a weird comparison. We've just got the, the lens caps um, and the camera caps and how they intertwine with each other. Now I really like this on the on the Canon system, that they actually lock up to each other and you can then store those away and you're not going to get any dust inside them. Uh, whereas the Pentax, they do sort of marry up together pretty well but they don't lock together so they can come loose and obviously get dust and stuff inside them. Okay, so we're on to the most important part of the video now. It's basically how good each camera feels in hand. So what I'm gonna talk about to keep this short because I could go on forever about both of them is just the main main dials and buttons um, because it's a never ending thing where you can just go on and on about like every little intricate detail. But we're not here for that today. Um, that's maybe a video down the road about each of these cameras. What I'm here to talk about now is the overall feel of the cameras in hand and how they make you, you feel when you, you shoot them basically, comfort, all the rest of it. Start off with the Pentax K3 Mark I. As soon as you pick this camera up, and anyone who has picked this camera up can back me up on this, it fits like a glove, it just feels so right. The engineers, um, when designing this camera, have really thought about what they're doing with this. It's just, um, it feels so good in hand. Oh, the grip is beautifully made. It Everything is where it should be, if you know what I mean. And it makes you want to pick this camera up as your first choice. Um, it's got all the buttons and dials in it, the exact right places. Once you like learn how to use the camera and that, it's just second nature. One of the things I do like on the Pentax, I've noticed over the Canon, is that it's got the shutter dial and the aperture dial. It's got the aperture dial on the back, that's how I have it set up. Shutter dial on the front, very intuitive. And especially when I'm using the TAV mode on the Pentax, which is basically auto ISO, and it gives me control of the aperture and the shutter. The camera decides the ISO, and that's a set button on the button dial for Pentax. Brilliant. 
three customizable user modes from the Pentax. Set the camera up exactly how you want. Overall, it's just, yeah, it's spot on. It really is a spot on camera. As you can see, the Canon 7D Mark II is bigger than the Pentax. And I'm just gonna say right off the bat, this might change if I had bigger hands, but I've got smaller hands. I am swaying to what I'm just saying right now, that I'm swaying towards the Pentax. The Canon um, is built really nice. Again, it's got the, the grip with the indent here for your finger. You know, you hold the camera, perfect. All the buttons and dials, well, the buttons are in the right places. The dials though, that's your shutter button on the top. It's, you have to, I don't know, it, it just doesn't feel. It's not in the right place for me. It should be in front of the, the shutter button for me personally. And the aperture, how you control the aperture is right here on the back of the camera. And now if you've got that up to your face, it's not very, um, it's not quick. It should be there as it is on the Pentax. And it's just as well that this uh, lens on the Canon here is super sharp, wide open. So I don't have to change the uh, aperture that, that often uh, with the stuff I shoot anyway. Again, this camera has got three customizable user modes. You set it up exactly how you want, but it has not got the same dial, uh, the mode on the top, the TAV mode, auto ISO. The camera decides the ISO and you get to control the aperture and the shutter. You have to set this up in a specific way to do that. I've managed to do it, but it's not a, a button where you can just put it on there and um, off you go for sports. It's really important. And I'll probably put a video out about that, how I did that on this camera. One thing that it does have, what's massive over this Pentax camera, is the um, the joystick to move your auto focus points around and this little flick switch on it. So you can change your auto focus type, like the groups and all that type of stuff. You can set it up brilliantly for that. For sports, that is uh, massive. I know the new Pentax K3 Mark III has that. And that'd be interesting to see what that actually felt like because it's brilliant on this camera. It's really a game changer for sports. But overall, like I've already said, in my opinion, the Pentax K3 wins out for feel, handling, all that type of stuff, bar the joystick. I'll give that to the Canon. But let me know what you think in the comments. Um, have you used both of these cameras? It'd be nice to hear from people who have. Um, so we can actually talk, you know, with opinions based on user experience. If you haven't, you know, what do you like about each of these cameras that I've shown in the video today? Um, there'll be plenty more, obviously, to come. I've got this series running about these cameras, comparing them on all sorts of stuff. So there'll be a video up next that you can click on for another comparison uh, between these cameras on a different subject. But that's it from me for the day, and I'm out for now. I'll see you in the next video.